It's the Triple H era and niggas mad. No, seriously, black people under contract on the WWE main roster are struggling. MVP certainly didn't hold back as he recently criticized Triple H's handling of the Hurt Business, or lack thereof. Montel jumped on Twitter for an impromptu Q&A, which quickly turned into a Dr. Umar Johnson promo on Triple H. MVP specifically pointed out an issue that speaks to a larger problem that I noticed before anybody else did in the Triple H era. The Hurt Business thrived under Vince McMahon for all his faults, and Triple H never put them back together. Similar to how black excellence had finally arrived consistently in WWE just a few short years ago, only for it all to come crashing down in an otherwise successful boom period. MVP went on to agree with a scorching hot take about Triple H's treatment of black talent. Mantea. I think we're forgetting something very important in all of this. A Twitter user said, the Triple H era is emasculating black men. I'm really hating it. MVP responded, you see it. Damn, Unc. Now, this ain't no white wrestling YouTube channel, so I'm not terrified of this type of discourse. I can speak to MVP's feelings, why they're valid, and what can be done to change his perception. You wanna go to a white wrestling YouTube channel? Maybe check out WrestleNomics, which is like kryptonite for being up all night. Today, we're gonna look at all the black wrestlers who have fallen by the wayside under the Triple H era and how Triple H can reverse this concerning trend with a simple phone call to you know who. You don't know who I'm talking about? Then subscribe in Swahili. It wasn't too long ago that black history was a new normal in WWE. Kofi Kingston became the first black WWE champion. Big E became the first black Money in the Bank winner. WrestleMania 37 was literally the blackest WrestleMania of all time. Bianca Belair faced Sasha Banks in the first WrestleMania main evented by two black women. Big E's Money in the Bank cash-in on Bobby Lashley was the first time in history the WWE Championship went black to black. Durag Vince was no longer an ECW champion. He was a WWE booker, and somehow, this creepy old man spoke truth to power with a WWE cookout that lasted for years. But if the previous era is personified by Kofi Kingston being hoisted on the New Day's shoulders, the Triple H era is the equivalent to Kofi losing the WWE title in six seconds. They even scripted Karrion Cross to bring that up this past Monday on Raw. In fact, Cross's nothing happening feud with the New Day is the perfect microcosm for the state of black wrestlers in WWE stuck in neutral with no direction. Triple H is the same person who's releasing one great cinematic feud after another, the way Future releases albums. Triple H has no problem telling a toxic love story between Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, and Dominic Mysterio, or a horror movie with the Wyatt Six, or a blood feud between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, or a Samoan succession with the bloodline, with the group threatening Cody Rhodes. But it all feels like it's airing on the Hallmark Channel. Where's the sizzle? Where's the steak? Where's the seasoning? Yes, Friends was able to be successful without black people. That doesn't mean WWE has to be. Plus, Friends stole their whole flow from a black show. So like everything else that's cool in white culture, they wouldn't be nearly as poppin' without us. WWE in the Triple H era can only be described as great cinema that exists in a suburban movie theater. Even with all this black talent, WWE can be broken down in two eras, before Paul and after Paul. Before Paul, Bianca Belair was headlining WrestleMania. After Paul, Bianca is stalled out and is in a hapless feud with the Unholy Union. What's crazy is that Jade Cargill is right there by her side. The Williams sisters of wrestling have been together for months, yet somehow they've cooled off after that time. By now, I'd figure they'd be dominant tag team champions. And in another couple of months, they'd start teasing a breakup for a WrestleMania main event. Not only has that not happened, that doesn't even seem close to the case. And we're on the verge of a moment where Bianca competes in a tag team match for two straight WrestleManias. What are we doing here? Before Paul, the Street Profits were up. After Paul, they turned heel, didn't really get the time to explain themselves, and turned babyface out of panic. Montez Ford was well on his way to becoming a single star not too long ago. And now it's like he's being used as a black guy to make Terrence Crawford feel at home. Him and Cody Rhodes. Before Paul, the Hurt Business was cooking. After Paul, Lashley, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander, and MVP were non-factors on the main roster. WWE tried to do a cinematic black storyline with Lashley and the Street Profits, otherwise known as The Pride, but it felt like a black sitcom formatted for the CW. It was so bad, Bobby Lashley quit. Like, how do you fumble Bobby Lashley? Tony Khan is about to show us how because MVP and Lashley reportedly want a Hurt Business remix and that man is addicted to free agents. Before Paul, the New Day was the most decorated black stable of all time. 
record-setting tag team title reigns, two black WWE champions, and a black king in Xavier Woods, both figuratively and literally the king of the ring in 2021. After Paul, Kofi Kingston is off TV with a fake injury, and X stays mobbing around with Akira Tozawa and friends. This isn't to say Triple H is anti-black people. He just has a problem scripting them. It's easy to blame WWE's ecosystem for this, but that's not the case either. Because a little southeast of Titan Towers, WWE NXT is in its black and black era. And the main roster's black people problem can be solved with one little phone call to Triple H's best friend, Shawn Michaels. Take one look at NXT and tell me it couldn't be the number one show on BET+. Go look at these videos about the rise of African NXT on Pro Wrestling Bits. Man, if Pro Wrestling was a black wedding, NXT would be the Cupid Shuffle. Trick Williams is the biggest star in NXT and one of the biggest in WWE. Before Paul, there was no such thing as a black barbershop segment. After Paul, both Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes became stars by shooting the shit in one. Meanwhile, Oba Femi is the black Brock Lesnar and is like Gunther but with more aura and personality. Way more aura and personality, man, it's not even close. In the Raw main event on Monday, I fell asleep before Finn Balor did and this was while Finn Balor was in a sleeper hold. Sure, I'd love if NXT had a team of black writers to help capture the essence of the culture. But for a white man, Shawn Michaels is doing the best job possible. It's almost like Vince McMahon had two sons and one grew up playing basketball while the other grew up playing pickleball. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But it's like Shawn Michaels was in locker rooms that smelled like castor oil and by proxy he was introduced to braids, fades, and waves while Triple H grew up in locker rooms alongside Yakubians who wore sandals in the shower. Like not even slides, Target brand shower shoes. NXT is betting on black, not because of diversity, but because it's cool and it draws, period. With a roster that looks like the cast of Living Single, NXT beat AEW in the ratings multiple times in a single year. That's the first time that's happened since 2020. To this day, NXT just feels like the hottest show. And in order to get anybody remotely interested in AEW, AEW has to mortgage one pay-per-view caliber match after another on its free TV. They just main evented Dynamite with Hangman vs. Darby for the first time, but with zero story. All that indie shit is for the birds, and through NXT, WWE is literally telling its wrestling audience that the future is black and beautiful. So the fact that Triple H is struggling to take advantage of the established black talent on the main roster is even more concerning. I need Shawn Michaels as guest booker of SmackDown. Just what? Triple H is doing a great job at the helm of WWE, but once upon a time, in one of the greatest tirades in NFL history, former 49ers head coach Mike Singletary said, I want winners. I want winners. Well, I think Shawn Michaels should be a guest booker in WWE for a week because I want niggas. Triple H and Stephanie McMahon's anniversary is coming up in October. October 25th to be exact. What do you know, that falls on a Friday. Perfect timing for Triple H to take a well-deserved day off, leaving Shawn Michaels to book WWE Blackdown. I need the Street Profits to open the show in front of a red curtain the way Keenan and Kel used to. I need Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill cosplaying as Baps. Give me an Apollo Crews push with Teddy Long as his manager and a five minute white boy challenge. By the end of this episode, the only three words missing would be Tyler Perry Presents. This is not a plea for diversity. It's a plea for common sense. This is a matter of pushing already established stars who have proven themselves and borrowing from an already successful formula that works in NXT. Check out this black ass playlist and subscribe. Are you satisfied with the treatment of black talent in the Triple H era? Tell me in the comments.